Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, today we're going to discuss further into differential equations and now look further into the uh, other models for population growth uh, video series and now look at the Gompertz function and uh, go over uh, example one which uh, but in this example I'll only go over parts A, B and C and then I'll do parts D as well as a brief history lesson on Gompertz or Benjamin Gompertz, the one who uh, invented this uh, theorem. I'll do that in the next video just to uh, save some time uh, to, to uh, like not make this video too long. Anyways, so basically, let's go over this example. This states another model for a growth function for a limited population where the population doesn't keep growing to infinity, but there's a limiting factor is given by the Gompertz function, which is a solution of the differential equation dp over dt equals to c times ln of capital K over P times P where C is a constant and K is the carrying capacity P is population and T is time. So part A states solve this differential equation and then when we do that we get Gompert's uh, function. So let's look at this let's write A so the uh, first thing to do is just write down that differential equation. Notice it's a separable equation. So dp over dt equals to c ln k over p, and then this is p like that. It's a separable equation because we can move all of the variable of one kind, in this case p, on the left side, and then all of, all of the variables with t on the right side, then we could take integral. Just like the methods in uh, separable equations, that I went over in my earlier videos, so make sure to check those out. I'll put all the links in the video description below for all the related videos to this. So when we do that, when we, what we end up having is a dp over, and now we have this uh, ln k, capital K, over p times p equals 2, and now we have this c dt. Let's write this a bit neater, like that. And then uh, the next step as well is to take an integral of both of these. And uh, the right side is easy, easy to take the integral. The integral of dt is just t, and c is just the constant. But for this one here, it's not too straightforward. But what we can try is the uh, try to use substitution. So if we let u equals to ln of uh, k over p, and uh, basically when we start, uh, start off like this, what we'll notice is first if we take, um, if we just expand this using logarithmic properties, this is a division, so it's the same thing as subtracting each of the uh, parts in that fraction. Equals to ln k minus ln p, and I'll put the proof for this in the video link below on, on the logarithmic properties video I did earlier. So we have this like that, and then when we take the differential, what we end up getting, or the derivative, uh, this is a differential here, the, in terms of p, this ln k, that's just a constant, goes to zero, then what we end up having is this ln uh, p, uh, der the derivative of that is going to be, well, 1 over p, uh, this is going to be 1 over p, and then uh, then we have to take into account chain rule, so then the differential of p, which is dp, like that. So the reason uh, we try to substitution is because there's a p over here, and what happens when you take a, a derivative of this, we have a p over there, and when we rearrange this all for dp, what end up, ends up happening is, move this on the other side as well as a negative, we get a negative p du. So this means when we replace dp with this, negative p du, ln k over p is u, then this p cancels. So let's just plug that in and keep keep this substitution for uh, for uh, future calculations to make things easier. So the dp becomes a negative p du, and then the bottom part ln k over p that's u, and then times p, and then what happens here is is over here we'll just simplify this so, so the p's cancel, and then put the negative outside, so we get this negative du over u, and we can take integral of that, we already know that, that's going to be ln absolute value of u, but before we get to that, now this left side equals to this right side, so c and uh, dt, so c, dt, like that. Yes, yeah, so now that we have this, we can take the integral of this side and this, and what we when we do that, this one's in terms of u, integral 
is uh, going to be, well, we have this negative, and then integral of 1 over u is ln absolute value of u. And uh, this is just a simple uh, uh, a proof here I've done before. Yeah, the proof for this derivative is, uh, again, I showed that in my earlier video. I'll put that in the video link below for the derivative of ln absolute value of u, as well as integral of 1 over u is the same thing. So when we what we have is here, then we always have to add the constant of integration. We'll call this plus c1. But just because we'll have another constant on the right side and then integral here c dt that's just c t c is the constant integral of dt is just t plus here c2 so that's another uh, constant of integration so now the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to move over the c1 on the other side so what we end up having is this negative ln absolute value of u e equals 2 c t plus c and where basically c, just to make it simpler, is equal to c2 minus c1. So we just move it over there, and where this is just a constant, because a subtraction of constants is still a constant. So we have that. And now the next thing is to do, well, let's just get rid of this negative sign first. So I'll put a negative sign on both sides so that this ends up becoming positive. This just makes it a negative, this makes it negative, just to save time, just remove those. So we get something like that. And then what happens here if we take the, make these both to the power of e, so that we can use another logarithmic property to cancel the e and ln. So what we get is this absolute value of u is equal to this, uh, but whenever you have a power like this where it's a subtraction, it's the same as multiplying the base power like that. So e to the c, Let's move that in front and then times by e to the negative ct. So that's the same thing. Again, you can learn more about power rules and power function rules in my earlier videos as well. I'll put that in the video link below. So we have this, something like this. And also where this c constant, that's a capital K c. This one was little k, so I'll just make this a bit bigger. So we have something like this. Yeah, I should have used a different constant, but uh, it's, it seems it's pretty easy to look at like that. So C, and there's this capital C. So would we have this now? Now, whenever you have an absolute value sign, it's the same thing as writing u equals to well, plus or minus. It just means that u could be plus or minus. doesn't matter. You're going to take absolute value and make it positive. So e to the negative c, make this capital. e to the negative c, t, lowercase c. Now we have this. And then what I'm going to do is simplify this even further and then just take this entire constant and just uh, write this as d. Because remember, this is e to the power of a negative constant. is still a constant, even with a plus or minus. So we'll call this d equals to negative ct, where now we have, uh, where I'll just write d over here. d is equal to plus or minus e to the negative c, which equals to a constant still. So finally, what we end up having is when we uh, replace u with what we had it defined as. So remember, u is just ln k over p. So what we end up getting now is ln k over p is equal to uh, d e to the negative c t. So now uh, what we could do is solve for d, and to do that, well, let's just assume we know an, an initial population, which we usually always do in population models. So let's say add t equals to 0. We have p of 0 equals to p subscript 0, p 0. So assume we know this. So then when we plug this inside, we have this ln of k over p naught or p 0 equals to d. And now we have e to the power of negative c times 0, which is still e to the 0. This equals to 1, the, the e to the 0 is 1, so this equals to d. So our d constant is just this when we're given initial population. So put this all together, we get a ln of k over p equals 2 ln of k over p naught, equal, then times by e to the negative ct. And now the next step is to solve for p. And again, we're going to do that same method again to get rid of this ln. So we'll take both sides to the power of e. So like this, e to the power of all this. So we have this, and then we can cancel the lawns. What we end up having is this k over p is equal to, and this one we can't cancel anything there. So this just equals to ln because 
this uh, ln is multiplied by this e to the negative ct. So we just can't cancel that. So we'll just write this down, e to the negative ct. So it's so e to the power of ln times another e over there. Yeah, another uh, e to the power of uh, function. So what we end up now getting is to get p. Well, what we could do is is uh, move the p on to the other side, and then the uh, this entire thing we could divide it over. So we'll have k divided by this entire right side, just to rearrange it. And then so what we end up getting is p of t is finally equal to k. So instead of just putting it underneath, it's the same thing as writing e to the power of negative ln. Negative power, same thing as dividing under. Just to save time, just write it like this. Negative ln uh, k, k divided by p0 times e to the negative c t. So there is the uh, solution to that differential equation, and this is the gom uh, perts function, like that. So pretty interesting solution. So now let's look at part B of this question and then part B of this example. Part B says find the limit of P of T as T approaches infinity. So let's let's just do that. So part B states limit as T approaches infinity of P of T. So this equals to and plug in our new formula over there. And now what we should get, because this is a, uh, we were told initially it's a limiting population, so we, we're told is that, well, what we assume is that the, as the limit as t approaches infinity of the population should approach its carrying capacity, k. So the answer should be k over there. And here we will see if that is the case. So this equals to limit, t approaches infinity. We have k e negative ln, k over p zero, e to the negative ct, put this all in bracket like that, move this line. So to do this, notice though everything's a constant is k e to the negative ln k over p o, p0, except that t is only here. So the only variable that's changing is a t, so we could bring this limit inside there. So this is just the same thing as writing k times e to the negative ln k over p0 times it by limit as t approaches infinity of this e to the negative ct. So that's the only thing that's changing. So notice here when this is approaching infinity, we have something that looks like an e to the negative, well, infinity, the c is just a constant. We assume it's positive constant. And the reason we're assuming c is a positive constant is because here we're assuming it's a growth uh, function, so that c is growing. So, uh, so since it's uh, like that, we have this e to the negative infinity, and now what happens here? This is the same thing as writing one over e to the infinity because it's a negative power, and now what we have is a one divided by a large number, uh, which is just approaching zero. So this means this entire thing is approaching zero, so the power is approaching zero, so we have this k times e to the zero, and again, this is just one uh, equals to one e to the zero. So what we end up having right here is finally what, uh, as I stated earlier, the limit as t approaches infinity sh of the population should approach its carrying capacity, capital K, like that. Yeah, so now let's look at the last part of this video's question, part C. So part C states, graph the Gompertz function for k equals 1,000, p0 is 100, c equals 0 0.05, and compare it with the logistic function in my earlier video titled, Differential Equations, Population Growth, Logistic Equation, Example 4, an Analytic Solution. And I'll put the video link of this below to see it, but I'll just write down that logistic formula we got, and then it's asked what are the similarities and what are the differences. So k is 1,000, p0 is 100, c is 0 0.05. So 1,000, 100, 0 0.05. So c, so now we're given, for this example, p of t is equal to, let's write this down, 1,000 is k, so we have 1,000 e to the negative ln, now we have this 1,000 k divided by p0, which is a 100, 
times by e to the negative 0 0.05t. Where did, uh, that's c. So c, there's the k over 100. It's the same thing as, as uh, 10 over here. 1,000 divided by 100 is just 10. So we have this formula. And now uh, let's just recall the logistic equation from that video that I did earlier. Logistic uh, equation for that specific example. What I had, and I'll, and I'll write this as P subscript L for logistic. I'll put that out like that. Bigger, neater L. So this one, P of T, P of L of T is equal to, and this one, if you recall, is equal to 1,000 divided by 1 plus 9 e to the negative point zero 0.08 T. Yeah, so if you were to graph this out, and here I've graphed it out with a, just a Google search graphing calculator, just type that in. So we have our 1,000 times e to the negative ln 1,000 over 100 times e to the uh, negative 0 0.05 t, as well as the logistic equation 1,000 divided by 1 plus 9 e to the negative 0 0.08 t. So you should have a graph like this, something like this. So notice here, uh, the blue is the Gompertz function and the red is the logistic function. It looks something like this and, and it starts off, both of them start off at 100. They intersect somewhere over here, which is about uh, around 750-ish or actually about 720 around at this 40 time period. And then it separates like this and then they're both approaching this 1000 mark. And here, if you could just move your mouse across, it never approaches the thousand mark. Just move, uh, move this further, and you see it's just approaching, approaching closer and closer. Both of them are approaching it. Yeah. So, uh, so now let's just go back to here. And here, I've copied and pasted that just so we can write down some stuff. So we were asked to find out the similarities and differences of these two functions. So the blue is the Compertz function. Gompertz, the red is the um, uh, logistic. So notice here initially, so but first of all it's the same here, same there, and then they're both approaching this 1000 mark. I'll just draw this across like that. And this is our carrying capacity. Both of them have a carrying capacity of 1000. So they're both approaching that. They both actually look very, very similar. Only thing is over here, Gumpertz is higher, so it's higher except at uh, here. Now you're going to see that uh, past this mark where it's around 40, uh, you have uh, this is actually lower. So here is lower over there. So only difference is it's initially higher and then uh, Gumpertz is, is later uh, lower, but they're both approaching K1000. So overall, or I'll just write over. Overall, they are very similar. So it's pretty much uh, yeah, it looks very similar to the other function. Overall, they're very similar. Yeah, and here I'll just explanation mark. Yeah, so they're they're pretty similar uh, like that. So I, I wouldn't yeah, I wouldn't be too specific when trying to model anything at uh, picking either one of these ones. But uh, in hope, but maybe there are some specific examples where Comperts is better than Logistic or Logistic is better than Comperts. Um, not sure about those, but there probably is. That's probably why uh, Comperts uh, invented this theorem. Anyways, that's all for today. And yeah, just to save time, I'll do Part D as well as a little brief history on Benjamin uh, Gompertz, um and uh, basically a bit of history on him and how he developed this formula etc then uh, again i'll go over part d in the next video yeah so stay tuned for that anyways that's all for today if you'll learn and like always you can download these uh, exact notes in the link below and thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math e